Hey folks, I'm Chet Husk, and I'm the project manager for the .NET SDK. And I'm here to talk to you about containers. Welcome to Containers 101 with .NET. In today's sessions, we're going to be covering a bunch of high-level topics about containers and seeing some demos. We're going to talk about what containers are. We're going to talk about when and why you might want to use them for your applications in the first video. And then in the second video, we're going to move on to the tooling side and talk about making great containers with .NET and debugging and running those containers. Here we're going to be pretty demo focused. We're going to be at the command line. We're going to be using Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code to show you some integrated tooling experiences. And then finally, in the third video, we're going to look at that same tooling from the deployment perspective. We're going to look at how the tooling that .NET has can help you deploy your containers easily and quickly and repeatably. So let's start at the top then. What are containers? Containers are kind of the native language of the cloud. If you look across all of the major cloud providers, Azure, AWS, Google, and so on, they all have multiple ways to run your containers that vary broadly in complexity. You have sort of uh, very streamlined options like uh, AWS's Lambda or Azure's functions, all the way up to entire managed Kubernetes services. And all of them can be powered by containers. So it's a very flexible choice of application packaging. And that's a pretty good reason to learn them and a very good reason for .NET to invest in making them easy to use. So why would you use these uh, containers instead of something more like a traditional VM or perhaps uh, an installable package of some sort? Well, for me, the answer comes down to a uh, uniform deployment and observability layer. There is a whole bunch of tooling that is based on containers. And by packaging your application in a container, you gain access to a whole world of uh, automated DevOps and automated tooling and alerting and monitoring that would be hard to do otherwise. So by choosing to package your applications in containers, you make your job as a maintainer or as an operator of your services easier long term. So that sort of is the, the nutshell pitch for containers. I want to leave you in this video with an example of how easy it can be to make dot, uh, containers with .NET. So let's make one real quick and then take a look at what's happening under the covers. So what you see here on the command line is what happens immediately after you run .NET New Web. I'm here in uh, Windows subsystem for Linux on an Ubuntu box with .NET 8 installed. The stable version just released, so it's a great opportunity to show it off. So in this web app, I can run a single command and get a container made. This is great. This is the same publish command I'm already used to to publish my web application being used for a slightly different but related purpose. And I can see that the SDK is telling me uh, the name of the container it just made, the tag it gave to that container, and it's telling me about the base image that it chose. These are all key components of a container. The base image you can think of as like the operating system and software configuration that you will be deploying your application onto. And tags are how you refer to those. So here we can see that because I was a web app, the SDK chose an ASP.NET.NET image from Microsoft. And because I'm targeting .NET 8, I got the 8.0 tag. Let's take a look at Docker real quick to see what that image looks like. So here is the latest tag of the container web app image that we just built. And if we look at this, we can see that this image is made up of layers. And each of these layers is a portion of the file system or some kind of change to the operating environment of the container. So we can see here that maybe some package updates are being run, or maybe a user is being added, or maybe the .NET runtime is being copied in and so on and so forth for the ASP.NET runtime. And then finally at the end, we can see our small, minimal, framework-dependent application bundled in as a final layer. And when you bring all these things together, you get a runnable container that we can actually see live. So here is our currently running container, and we can see that it is in fact 
running and able to greet us. So that was a quick taste of the, the how and the why of containers and how .NET can make it easy to get started with them. Uh, join me for the next video where we'll take a deeper look in the, into the tooling experiences that we have, both on the command line as well as in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Thanks for watching.